Morning. Welcome back to Veg Plot. It's another, another lovely blue sky day. I only, I only come up to a lot when film when it's lovely and blue sky days. You don't see them in all the days when it's actually grey and yucky. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you ever wonder, my goodness me, it's always blue skies in Cornwall. It's not. Um, anyway. <laughs> I'm up at the allotment today. Uh, I've got these dahlia stakes. I don't know if you've seen them in your garden centres, used for um, holding up the dahlias when it gets a bit windy and so on and so forth. But I use them in the polytunnel to make my shelving racks. But as I don't need those at the moment, I brought them up here. I've got a structure to make because I want to get these peas in. If you remember, these are the uh, pea seeds I bought from the Asian food shop, uh, which I've got some growing up. Uh, the allotment we'll have a look at in a minute. So they've got to go out. Uh, I've got some more dwarf French beans. You can still sow these um, and they will um, produce beans in time before winter if you're here in the UK. So, um, well, I guess that depends on where your first frost is, but for me, these should be fine. Uh, and then finally, we've got some Trail of Tears beans, uh, which I was kindly given a few years ago by a friend on Instagram. And yeah, these are all good. These are a climbing bean, if you haven't grown them. They uh, have like a black bean inside a green pod and you can either dry the beans and use them through winter in stews and things, which is very nice, and soups. Uh, or you can pick the pods young and eat them green, just like a French bean. So yeah, hopefully gonna get all of this lot in today. Right, I'm gonna get things together. I'll go and build this structure and get planting. I must admit, I'm actually winging this a bit today. I just sort of, I don't know about you, but I get to the allotment and I just, uh, I have a plan in my head for sort of what I want to do, but I haven't necessarily ever done it before. So I've never used these before up on the plot for this, but I figured if I put one at each end of this bed. Um, and then I can use bamboo canes to support them, bang them in, etc., etc., And then I can put in some, um, plastic trellisy work I've got, string that up and then hopefully the peas can grab that. Right, let's try and figure this out as we go along, shall we? Tends to be a, tends to be how I do things. I saw, as I say, I have things in my mind, but I'm not actually always 100% accurate deciding what they're gonna be until I actually get there. So you lift this over the top, slide it down gently, and then hopefully it won't split the stake, but we will see. As you bang it in, you've got to kind of keep it straight. You've got to keep an eye on how the post is going into the ground. Like that. See, that's quite sturdy, I think. I could put it in a little bit more, maybe. But yeah, that isn't going anywhere. Right, so do another one at this end. There we go. I think that's about the same. Good. Right, now we need to get some string in and then some canes and then we'll get the wire attached. I've got some string. So the idea with this is, is to <coughs> unravel it all the way along and thread it through the top holes and then tie it up to the post at a certain height so it hangs. So that's the, the next idea. So first thing is if we take the trellis work here and we just hold it against the post and then a pair of secateurs. I'm just going to mark how high this one comes to and then I'm going to tie the string just where that was. Just a bit higher actually and I can run this then down the length That'll give me a length for how much I need. Right. And if we cut that off a bit longer. I've got the pen knife today, so I've got to use, <laughs> I've got to use the sectors. Right. And then just thread through each one of these holes Thread one of these through. Mm. 
that in there and lined up and just poke that in just to keep it upright for the minute. Right, there we are, all done and up, which is good. Uh, you can see where I put in these sort of uh, extra braces on these stops and blowing around, but this one, which doesn't have one, it blows everywhere, so I've got to get another bamboo cane for that. But yeah, they're all in. I think what I'll probably do, because these are taller, I think I'll probably try growing the, um, uh, the beans up these. Uh, and the peas on this one because they're a bit shorter and I don't quite know how tall they get yet so I might not have to put up extra trellis work but yeah quite pleased with that okay right let's go and get some beans and uh and get planting and I think somewhere around here I've got a trowel oh, I need that handy trowel and good to give them a good soaking before they get in the ground first I think we'll do them both give them a good soaking give them a few minutes to Absorb all that and these, and then we'll come back and uh, yeah, plant plant them out. Right, while that's soaking, perhaps we should go and harvest something. Let's go and get some um, go and get some broad beans, shall we? Got the harvest harvest basket here. Uh, yeah, this is the one I picked earlier. I don't know if I opened it up. I can open it up a bit more now. Looks good, doesn't they? They're beginning to uh, split, actually. Um, yeah, yes, I, I like to take the outer skin off, and then they're yeah, really lovely. I find the outer skin a bit too bitter. Yeah. But yeah, nothing quite like fresh food straight off the allotment. Anyway, I've eaten that lot. <laughs> I'll put that on the compost. But yeah, anyway, the way I get these out, I don't know if you've ever done this before, just pinch, nip along the back, then give the outer casing a squeeze, and it just pops out. Yeah, really delicious raw, and good in salads and things like that. Excuse me, talking my mouth open. <laughs> I just, uh, you can just pull them off like this, or if I get the second, you know, back in a second, you can probably do less damage to the plants if you use secateurs and just nip them off just before the stem. Just open them up occasionally just to check they're still good size. Yep. So these beans are broad beans um, and uh, I think they're called ratio yeah, ratio. They were sown on the 25th of March this year. And um, yeah, I tend to do spring sowing with mine. If I do autumn sowing, they tend to get so trashed in the winter that I think I've said it before that they basically are no good. So I don't bother with the autumn sowings. a lot of beans here this year I'm amazed uh, I think I've counted there are about 26 plants so uh, yeah it'll be interesting to see uh, how much we get from this it's not that I'm particularly counting but uh, it's always nice to know the numbers and the sort of little returns that you're getting from all the efforts you put in love these just perfect I don't like them too big when they get massive not a great keen on really big chunky broad beans there find them a bit flavourless so yeah I like them when they're a little bit smaller yeah a few more a few more in here so I'm just going to get on 
harvest all these, I'll show you what we get at the end of it. Right, really, really pleased with that little harvest. That's a good basket worth there. So we're not massive raw bean eaters in the house, but um, it's quite nice to have some and that you're quite nice um, making a pesto and so on, it's quite nice, but also popped out eating raw in salads. Um, but we shall freeze a lot of these uh, and we've still got some left on the plant, some little ones. And I've also, I've left some on this row here, as you can see, so I'm going to save these for seed for next year, these few on this row. Uh, and any plants that haven't got any, they'll all be snipped down and uh, cleared. So next video, perhaps be clearing out this bed. We shall see. Uh, that's the thing, isn't it, this time of year? It's really important not to forget that you need to keep sowing, keep planting out because the season isn't over. And I know it's very easy, isn't it, to get, we get lulled into this period of time where all the crops are coming in and we sort of forget that if we keep sowing we can keep getting crops right up to winter. Anyway that's uh, really pleased with that lot so I think what we should do is we should try and carry this lot over to near the shed and, uh, and then I think as I said we will go and get put these in the shade I find it's best to keep stuff in the shade and we'll go and get some of these artichokes uh, because I want to have all these out today. I've got absolutely loads at home. I'll try and cut to it now, I'll just show you a few of the heads we've got. They're not purple uh, like these are, but they're really prolific this year. But anyway, yeah, so I've got a few of these, but I don't want these up at the plot anymore. I want what I really want is the plants to recover. So by cutting them now, what it means now is that the plant it's not going to put any more effort into those flowers and hopefully if we're lucky we might see some shoots come up from around the base a little bit later in the year. Anyway just leave that now and I think I've got one more tiny one here uh, which looks like it's going to open actually so I think I'll have that one as well give this plant a chance to recuperate and hopefully as I say down in the a bit later in the season if we keep it watered we should see new plants springing out for next year. One thing I didn't mention about artichokes is, and I don't know if you get it where you are, is that they can collect a lot of sort of critters in them like earwigs and things. So it's always best before you go home, just to sort of take off the very bottom leaves, bottom outer leaves, and just wiggle around and make sure you, you've got all the earwigs out. Anyway, right, let's just grab all these and we'll take them up to the bench. Right, let's just put them there. So that's pretty good. Right, I think what I should do now is get these beans in and the peas, and then I want some more kale and so on and so forth, and some beetroot, yeah, to take home as well. Right, let's get planting. Right, let me just uh, grab these. Oh, oh, careful, there's actually quite a bit of water in this tray still. I don't want to spill this all over myself. Right, I think the first thing is to put in will be the Trail of Tears beans. You can see they're absolutely desperate to get going. I think they've also they've perked up for that bit of water which has really helped. Uh, these deep root trainers are great. You can see the roots coming at the bottom. So as like always just uh, just put your finger in there that hole at the bottom push and it just loosens them and then I think I've sown one or two per per module so if we just take one out have a look. Yeah, you can see you've got really, really nice roots on these. Not too congested yet, but desperate to get out the bottom. So when you um, when you plant them, you've just got to loosen them up a little bit and then put them in the hole. Uh, I'll dig them in, water them in, and hopefully, I think I've got about uh, 40 or so here. So yeah, I should put them all down the back edge and then see if we've got any we can put on this front edge too. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is uh, take the beans Hold them by the roots is probably best. <laughs> and then just dig a little hole and pop them in. And uh, yeah, I shall just 
put them in a little bit, I shall leave it sort of an indentation so I can water them. Actually, I'll just go and get a watering can. Yes, that one I filled up earlier. <laughs> yeah, just leave a little trench then I can just water them in um, and then cover them over again and that'll help stop the water uh, and the evaporation, you know, because uh, it's, it's quite warm and windy today. Right, let's get the rest of them. I'm not going to pop them all out like I sometimes do because uh, it's so hot that uh, the actual wind might damage the roots. The wind and the sun might damage the roots. So I'm just going to pull them out as I need them and put them reasonably close together and then just pop them in. And then as I say, just give them the water and that should be good to go. Right, I'm going to get on with this and I'll catch up with you when they're all in. So we had quite a good germination rate too. There's only one, two, three, four, five cells which didn't didn't germinate, so that was good. So now I'm going to put these dwarf French beans in. I think what I'll do is I'll just put them in the front here and then I'll try and sow some more uh, and that will give me plenty of room for other stuff uh, later on. So that's the beans in, which is all good. Right, let's go and get these peas because I want to get those in as well before they uh, before they go too wild. They're <laughs> quite wild at the moment. They're probably very matted together, you know, tied up together to support themselves. But we'll see how they go. Try and get them uh, lifted up with you. You're going to get a close up now <laughs> and put them down here because yeah, they're going to go in this bed here. I think I'll start this end up where you are. <laughs> I was just going to have a look at the roots actually because these are, as I say, quite, quite, um, I wouldn't say pot bound, but they're beginning to mat themselves together. But you can see the roots all coming out the bottom. I think these are well and truly ready to go out. So I pop one out, try not to tear it, break it, but to tear some of the tendrils. But yeah, roots look quite good on these. So I shall probably. Just crack on with these. You don't want to watch me plant a load of old peas, do you? Um, actually, yeah, you can see the pea there at the bottom. Look. Yeah, that'll focus on that. Anyway, yeah, so I shall crack on, get these done, catch up with you when they're finished. No, well, all in the ground. <laughs> right, where's the trowel? Yeah, these were sown on the 9th of June. Yeah, so not long ago. I think the main thing about peas is, if you uh, think of planting them out now, is pea moth. That's the main possible possible problem at this time of year is that the moths come along and they lay their eggs right at the tips of the flowers or the where the flower joins the stalk and then as the flower then develops into the pea pod uh, the little caterpillar is sort of embedded in the pea pod in with the peas um, so yeah that's kind of how it happens and then obviously then you get the old caterpillar in your pea pod which is always disgusting isn't it <laughs> but uh, anyway so I shall get on and do that and hopefully we won't have to worry too much about that but we shall see. It's a bit late in the season and I might get hit by them. Right, that's uh, the peas in as well. Let me just show you. Uh, pleased with these. Uh, I have no idea what they're going to be like, as I said <laughs> before, but they're all in. And I think that's about 80 uh, cells and most of them are two or three peas per cell. So there's quite a lot in there. I am just hoping, as I said before, that the, um, yeah, the pheasants don't get them before I get a chance to come back and put some netting around. But having said that, I did nip uh, some tips off and eat them. And they are delicious, really good. So I might actually sow a load more of these at home and just use them as pea shoots, which is probably a much better way to eat them. So now I think the last few things I want to do is get some, a couple of um, beetroot, some of these golden beetroot and also some more kale because we've eaten what we had at home but yeah let me show you it's uh i think there's one i spied under here it's um yeah look at that beauty yeah lovely right so that's one 
one beetroot. I think I've got another one down here. And it's interesting, what with all this dry weather, the ones which have done the best are the ones which aren't actually being grown with any others. You know, a lot of the others are multi-sown and they really are, you know, competing for moisture, I think. But these two, absolutely cracking. Love these. Right, let's just put that back on there, keep the critters out. And go and put this on the bench. Well, actually not on the bench. I've had to hide it all around in the shade, around the back here. Let's just put that there for a minute. And the other thing I want is some kale. Some noises that you want to associate with things, don't you? This breaking of uh, leaves off the kale is something I love about fresh food on the allotment. Right, let's put that there. Put that one back. Now I'll take these. Lovely, aren't they? Fantastic. Right, take these, put them in the shade as well. Ah, oh, brilliant. Well, that's uh, been quite a lovely morning. It is a glorious day. Let me just spin you around. It's beautiful up here today. And all the uh, poppies, look, they're all coming out in their glory. They love it in the sun. They close at night and then they come out when the sun's out. Well, I've just moved actually all those crops because I just wanted to get them out and have a quick look at them. So yeah, here are the raw beans. These are looking good. I'll enjoy podding those a bit later. <laughs> uh, the globe artichokes, these are the uh, purple ones. And then the two golden beetroot, which you can eat the leaves. Did you know that you can eat the leaves? I'm sure you do. You can eat the leaves of beetroot and they're very tasty actually. Uh, and then we've got some of the lovely Cavallo Nero kale, dino kale, which is doing really well at the moment. Uh, and then I've picked these few leaves from the cauliflower just to see what they're like. So I'm pretty sure you can eat those. So yeah, really pleased with that little harvest this morning and we've had a, had a good day up here today. Okay, wherever you are in the world, hope you have a lovely weekend. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.